So, you suddenly book a flight to Brunei because of the seat sale. Then you realize, what am I going to do in Brunei? Well, you click the right video and come to the right channel because I'll be giving you an idea of the different places to visit and other things that you can do so you can be more knowledgeable about Brunei. But before we jump into it, remember to press the subscribe button and put a thumbs up on this video, especially if you found this one very helpful. Brunei is a very slow-paced, easy kind of country. You know what I'm saying? A person who is accustomed to a fast-paced environment would definitely need to adjust in here. We had days that we were just hanging in coffee shops and the whole afternoon and are just waiting for friends to come. The people here loves tourists and very welcoming. As said by my local friends, they would usually insist to tour visitors around, which is actually understandable. After all, almost everyone here owns a car. Honestly speaking, I am not really expecting too much in this place, but I do feel curious to why and how this silent country have been known as the kingdom of unexpected treasures. Well, just look at those golden colored malls. Where to stay in Brunei? Picking the location for your accommodation is always essential and correlated to what you are going to do in a place. Here in Begawan, even though the whole city can be toured for just a day or two, it is still essential to pick a place that are somehow accessible to other amenities like convenience stores, restaurants, and the likes. In my visit, I decided to pick a location within the city center, a place near to almost all of the destinations we are visiting. Honestly, I was torn between picking a hostel nearby the river or a nicer hotel at a much higher price. And because we only have a few choices, we decided to pick the latter. That is due to the fact that we also want to just stay a more relaxing time at the hotel. What we booked was 10 to 15 minutes away from the airport and is also a few kilometers away from the famous Omar Ali Saifuddin Mosque. Our total rent for a three night stay in the hotel was around 200 US dollars. That includes a buffet breakfast and airport transfers to and from. How to go around the city. That is actually one of the difficult part in here unless you are ready to splurge money and rent a car or go with a taxi whenever you go out of the hotel for there are only a few public transportations available. In my short stay, I think I only seen two or three buses passing by our place. There are taxis available too but of course, that would cost a bit much. Grab or Uber isn't popular here. What they got here is called Dart. As to what the Dart driver told me, darts are available 24 hours and they can bring you whenever you wanted to go within Brunei. But you know what? If you got a Bruneian friend to tour you around, that could be the best option. What to do in Brunei? The main city, Bandar Seri Digawan, can really be toured for only a day. Most of the attractions or landmarks sits just beside each other and most of the time, you will only spend a few minutes to an hour in a place. Even before my visit in this country, my Brunei friends were already telling me that if I'm a foodie, I would be able to really enjoy the country for there aren't much to explore. Well, true to what they have said, it was a small city and there is no traffic in Begawan. Hence, you'll reach your destination right on the dot. I listed down some of the places you could visit. You can actually do this the whole day. You can even rearrange it. But if you are staying for more than a day or two, you can simply distribute these places so you could be able to have a more relaxing trip. Here is my itinerary suggestion. You can start with a quick visit at the Stana Nurul Iman, which is the official residence of the Sultan of Brunei. Though the palace is not really open to the public, except on the annual Islamic celebration called Hari Raya Aidil Fidir. If taking a photo at the gate will suffice you, then go and visit. After which, go to the most visited attraction here called Omar Ali Saifuddin Mosque. It is an operational mosque but also considered it as a major historical site and a famous tourist attraction here in Brunei. So expect to see a lot of tourists roaming around this place. A museum is always a good place to know the history of a country. So visiting Royal Regala Museum should be included on your list too. Within the area, there is a nice old mall called the Yayasan Complex. 
The structure actually is really good and you can really have a different vantage point of Omar Ali Saipuddin Mosque. You can also grab a bite here for lunch. If one museum would not be enough for you, then head down south near the river and the Brunei State Museums can be found. Brunei State Museum is actually a collective term for all the museums in Brunei. Excluding Royal Regala, they can all be found in one place. This includes Malay Technology Museum, Brunei Darussalam Maritime Museum, Museum Department, National Museum, Brunei Museum, and Oil and Gas Discovery Center. You can just pick one or two if you like. Then later in the afternoon, take a two-hour tour in the Brunei River Cruise, which will tour you with all the significant places built nearby the river. After that, drive your way to Hasnil Bulkia Mosque. It is one of the two national mosques in here, which I can say got a really different aesthetics compared to Saipuddin Mosque. Then, end your day with a dinner at the largest mall in Brunei, or enjoy a street food at the Gadong Night Market. On the second day, you can include far places in the north of Brunei like a visit at the Empire Brunei Hotel and Jerudong Park. If you wanted to get the list, you'll find it down at the description below and also a link of an article about my trip in Brunei. We'll also create a separate video for some of the food places to try on your visit. Just a few more tips! Brunei get a really hazy weather with very minimal rains. Hence, it is advisable to wear appropriate but decent-like clothes if you're visiting. Most of the establishments here open late and closes early. At around 10 o'clock in the evening, it would be hard already to find a restaurant that is open. This country also got a very low to 9 crime rate. Like, most of the articles I've seen in the newspapers were all positive. It is also a myth that there are no pork meals here in Brunei. You just need to know where to go. Hit me a comment and we'll splurge more information. Hope this helps. Enjoy your trip and keep me updated. Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below. Thanks Brody. Until the next one, this is Dungdug in the City, signing off.